TV Mom, and today we're going to work on hemming this beautiful Cinderella blue prom dress. So, I just had the fitting, I had her try it on with her shoes that she's going to wear, and I pinned it up all the way around, and then we're going to get started on it. The hem on this dress is really different in that it has this really wide band of stiffening on it. So this is the right side, and if you turn it inside out you can see it. The band of stiffening is sewn to the lining. We're going to have to take that out and move it up. So I actually, this is the first dress I've done with this kind of a stiffener in the band. So um, we're going to learn as we go. Okay, here's the dress on my table. And the first thing I actually did was I took the, um, it had a crinoline underneath, which is a bunch of tulle to give it a lot of body. And she didn't want that, so I took it out. Um, I'm actually going to make it as a slip so she can add it if she wants it or doesn't, but that's a separate project. So anyway, I have all that fluff out there. It's a little easier to manage. I'm going to start by going along. I'm going to take one of these um, markers that washes out very easily. You just have to get a little bit wet. And I'm going to mark, I'm just going to kind of fold it. I'm just going to mark all along this edge. I'm going to mark the lining all the way around show where I recommend it being cut off. Okay, so let's start by marking that edge. One thing I want to mention real quick is when you do your um, fitting and you pin it up, make sure that you pin it wherever you have a seam and that your seam lines up up here. Because what you'll find is in other areas of the dress you might be pinning it like this, but you can't tell, which kind of makes your measurements wonky. So make sure whenever you have a seam that you get that lined up as straight as you can. This dress happens to have um, a train which she wants taken off. So as you can see, my hem is not consistent or even. So from this is my side seam, and then I'm going to go all the way around to the back, and I get it gets really wide back here. So, but I made sure on my center back seam that I have it lined up right there, and then I have my side seam lined up, so I'm going to have to kind of connect the dots. And I pinned it in between as kind of an estimation, but it, this gets kind of to be a mess. It's hard to tell what's going on. Alright, um, I've marked it all the way around with the blue line. I've got two blue lines here because I needed to pick up the dress and shake it. I didn't realize I had a bunch of fabric up underneath, so. Alright, don't worry about if it's pretty or not. You just need a rough estimation of where that line's going to be. Because really what you want to do is you want to get these pins out as soon as you can. Because these pins, when you move it around, they're going to snag on this upper fabric and you're going to damage your fabric. So as soon as you can, you want to get these pins out. So now that I have that um, marked, my estimation, I can take these pins out. It'll be a lot safer to work with it. Once I get all the pins out, I'm going to start pulling out seams. Um, I need to pull out this seam where it's stitched, my lining is stitched to the skirt, and then I need to probably pull out this seam, which attaches my um, stiffener to the lining. So, pins out, and then kick back on the couch with a good TV show, and get your seam ripper, and start pulling Alright, I'm going to show you a quick trick about using seam rippers. I'm going to show you two seam rippers. There's something different about them. This one has a little ball on this tip, and this one doesn't. I don't want this one. I want the one with the little ball on the tip. Now, I don't know if these are just so old that all the balls have fallen off, but I want one with a ball on it, and I'll show you why. I just learned this a few years ago. I've been sewing my whole life. I don't know if I just missed that day in sewing class or what. So I'm going to get started, and I'm going to use the pointy end to pick a little bit and get it opened. Let's see if we can get an opening. Oh, you know what? This is actually top stitching and then there's another row of stitching. So we've got two rows of stitching here. Once I get it started, I'm going to turn that ball to the inside and I should just be able to go like this with it. You see that? The reason why I'm putting the ball on the inside is because it won't, as it's sliding in here, it's not going to snag my fabric. That's the point of the ball. 
put the ball towards the inside and it doesn't snag your fabric. If you can get a hold of it just right and you lay it on something flat, you should be able to get a nice long run from it. Sometimes it's a little tricky. Kind of at a bad angle, I think. Anyway, much quicker than just sitting here and going pick, 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 pick. So, um, get it in there. Get it just the right angle. And you should just be able to... Oh, yeah, there we go. Actually, just cut the fabric instead of the <laughs> stitch. Well, that works, too. Um, I'm not going to need this fabric. I'm going to get rid of it, so... I'm not too worried that I just cut it. So, oh, now we get to see our um, stiffener inside. And we used to, when I worked at the fabric store, we called this horsehair. It's not out, made out of horsehair, but it's like a plastic webbing. And we want to save this. We're going to have to use this somewhere else. So you're going to have to take out all the stitching that connects this to the dress and disconnect the dress from it. All right, I'm going to go find someplace comfy to sit with my seam ripper and try to keep the cat off of it, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got all the stiffening out. Here's that stiffening. <laughs> That's a really big hem. So this was all the way around between my two layers. So that's out. We're just going to put that off to the side right now. I've got my lining on the table. The outer satin is over there. So this is my lining, and this is the f half of the front half. So I've got my two side seams here together. Basically what I've done is I've laid them on top of each other, lined them up along the edge, and pinned them. And I went all the way over to this side here, and this would be my front, right in the middle of the front. So anyway, what I'm doing is I'm basically comparing the front left to the front right, and I'm looking at where my blue line is and seeing what the difference is. So, obviously I don't want to cut just on my blue line, because on this side I had it there, and this side I had it an inch different. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to probably take the higher of the two, because I want to make sure it's not too long, or I could take the average of the two. So this is what I did. Now this is the first time I've done it this way, I don't know why. I had before just cut one half and then laid it on the other side, but I think I'm going to cut both of these out at the same time. And I want to get a nice line now. See how my line's really kind of, um, sorry, my cat's making some noise. She's discovered the crinoline. I want to, my line is really kind of goofy because I just really rough. So I'm going to take a marking tool and make a nice clean line. Cat, are you comfy now? Are you going to be quiet? Yeah, I'm talking to you. So the line I drew was real um, jagged because I just, you know, took the marker and rough estimated it. So I want to get a nice, smooth, straight line, but it has to be a curved line. That's very tricky to do with a ruler. You know, one of these straight rulers, it's very hard to get a nice curved line because you keep having to alter the ruler and change it. So I don't use that. What I've discovered that I like to use is I use a chain. So I'm going to lay that on my fabric. I'm going to stick one end there, one end here, and by going like that, if I want a little lower here, I can get a nice curved, nice curved line. Look at that. And then I'm going to take another marking tool and I'm going to mark this curved line. I'm going to do that all the way to the center front. Um, just mention real quick that I'm going to cut this right up right where it skims the floor, and my thought process is if I cut it up where it skims the floor and then do half an inch seam allowance, then it'll be just slightly off the floor. So if you want to skim the floor, if you want to be the exact same length as where you pinned it, you're going to have to move this down. But I actually want a little bit shorter than where I pinned it. The easiest thing for me to pin is just to pin it so it touches the floor, just barely skimming the floor. I don't really want to hem it that way because she'll trip on it, so by cutting it right where it touches the floor and then subtracting my seam allowance when I sew it, it'll be about perfect. Okay, I've got my new line marked, a nice smooth skinny line. Once again, we're just doing the front half, now I'm going to cut it out. I've not actually done this before where I've cut both at the same time, so 
it's just the lining though, so I'm going to give it a whirl and see if I like how it turned out. So next is to cut from my center front to my side Okay, seam. I cut the front half off. And now this is stopped at my side seam, so I'm basically just going to repeat the process for the back half. I think it worked out really good. Be nice to your scrap though, because you're going to use this as your template to cut the satin. Okay, so I cut off the lining and then I laid it on the table just like I did before and I gradually pinned the lining to the satin using that as a pattern and then I hung it up just to make sure that um, sometimes it's wrinkled underneath and you don't notice so by hanging it up and then going all the way around and just double checking that edge and just double checking to make sure it's okay. I also, after I trimmed the lining, I hung it up and I lifted this the front up and checked that lining underneath to make sure it looked nice and even. I had to take the, there's another lining under here too, so I had to take that lining and pin it up and bunch it up. So just to eye it and make sure you didn't make some glaring obvious error, because when it's laying on the table it's just a pile of fabric. So every once in a while it's nice to get it up and make sure it looks okay. So, where was I? So I've got it pinned. Make sure that your front is in the front. Um, your side seam is on your side seam. And your back is the back, because you do not want to cut the train off the front of your dress. So I'm, the lining has the same seams as the outer fabric, so it's all lined up. One issue I had, though, as I was going around, I ended up with the lining being a little bit um, bigger. So I had this extra fabric. So I've just been gradually repinning it and going around and not smoothing it so much, but just leaving a, sorry, going around and as I repin it, I've been doing this on the table, and usually on the table, you know, you kind of smooth it. Well, instead of smoothing it, just kind of leave a little bit just a little bit of extra in there. That's called easing in the fullness. So I have to continue chasing this fullness around and I'll just keep repinning it but adding a little bit of fullness until I get rid of that little extra. So once you have it all pinned on and you've hung it up and made sure it looks okay, you can cut your outer layer, which is the most nerve wracking part. But I think we're good. Okay, the satin is now cut. So we have our satin and our lining are now cut and trimmed. I don't have the underlining trimmed. We're going to worry about that later. Now we need to do the next step, which is sew this to the lining. If you remember correctly, that this was in here, and then this was turned under, and this was turned no under, and it was all sewn together. So now we have to put that back together. So to start that process, we're going to put this back to this. Um, to do that, I'm going to mark a line. I think I'm going to do, because I'm planning on sewing them together at half inch. I want this to be a little above that. I don't want it to be right where I'm going to stitch. So I think I'm going to make a line at three quarters. So I'm going to put this on three quarters and I'm going to use a, a little bit of a blue tailor's chalk. And I'm just going to have to, I'm just going to gradually move it. Obviously this is curved, so I'll just kind of keep gradually shifting and go around. Mark it all the way around. And then I'm going to pin this. Now this is going to be really tricky to work with because it's really stretchy. I mean, I can squish it and make it really fat. I can stretch it and make it really skinny. I'm just going to try it, and I've never really worked with it this fat, certainly. And lay it on there and pin it as it's trying very hard not to stretch it or squish it. I'm going to start where the seam is though because since I took the train off this is probably going to need to be shorter so I'm going to start just you know about five inches from here and work my way around and then I can see what needs to be trimmed off when I get all the way around. There's no point in measuring all the way around the skirt with as loosey-goosey as this is. Just Start pinning it, go all the way around, and then see where it needs to be trimmed. That's probably a good thing, too, because I, when I was pulling the seams out, I actually snagged it really bad right there. I think that was the only part I did a bad snag. Okay, so, 
you want to pin this to your lining and it should be the side so that's in between your satin and your lining. You're going to pin that on there and then you're going to stitch it down just close to both edges along the top and along the bottom. What's nice about this because it is stretchy and squishy it will curve. You should be able to by stretching the bottom and squishing the top, you should be able to Okay, I just it. wanted to show you real quick what we've been doing. Um, so I've got it pinned all the way around. I pinned it along the top edge and the bottom edge, lining it up with my mark that I made on the bottom. I started pretty close to my seam. As you can see, I have a lot of extra. But like I said, there was a train before, so we cut off quite a bit of train. Um, I haven't trimmed this yet. I wanted to sew it first. So I started a couple inches away, and I'm going to stop a couple inches early, sew both the top and bottom, and just make sure that it's laying right and looking good before I trim this and overlap it. And then after I do that, then I'll come back and sew that a little bit shut. To sew it, I'm using my um, widest stitch length, which is on my machine, it's a four, also known as a basting stitch or a gathering stitch. There's two reasons I decided to do that. One is if I decide that this didn't work, I can take it out really easily. And the other reason is it allows me to sew over my pins really easily. So I made it all the way around and I haven't hit a single pin. So it's really nice. I don't have to keep stopping and taking out pins. Another thing I want to share with you is how I'm working on this is right here in the middle I have mounded up my outer, this is my outer satin. So I'm basically just keep spinning this as I sew. And that way I'm not getting my satin tangled up with all these pins in my hem, or in the lining. And then under here I also have in the middle mounted up my very innermost lining, because there's two linings. So this is working pretty good, just to keep the satin mounted in the middle and keep spinning it. Another way I know a lot of people do is they will hang the dress from the ceiling so that they can rotate it without having it on the table. I've only done that once, and I don't know. I just I, I'm okay with doing it this way. So I'm going to finish sewing my top and bottom, except for about I don't know eight inches around my um, juncture, and then I'm going to see what it looks like. Next thing I did was I trimmed off the extra fabric. So what I did is I laid it on, marked where my seam should be. I'm just lining up with the back seam and then I cut it three-eighths of an inch longer and I did that for both sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take both of these, put them together just like I normally would, my two raw edges even, and I'm going to stitch them together about three-eighths of an inch. Okay, I stitched them together. Next I'm going to take this strip of scrap fabric. This is what they had on there before, so I'm just repeating the way they did it. And I'm going to put this on there. And now I'm going to sew this down. I just kind of wanted to pre-stitch it so it was easier to insert in here. So once I get this in there, I'm going to um, stitch it. And then what you do is then you lay it flat and you stitch it again. So I've got two more steps. I'm going to just stitch it shut. Then I'm going to lay it flat and stitch it. Kitty wants to help. Okay, that's done. And the main reason why I did it this way is because that's how it was done before. So I just repeated what they did. Now we're going to lay it flat, um, pin it top and bottom, and stitch it top and bottom, just like you did all the way around. Okay. It's all done. It's been sewed all the way around. I checked the back side. It looks pretty good. In hindsight, I should have done something, though. I should have starched this um, lining fabric because it has no body whatsoever. So it was really hard to make sure that this ended up smooth. So you can see it's kind of rim um, wrinkled, puckered there a little bit. Um, just giving it a good starch ahead of time and just use your regular spray starch whatever you can buy at the grocery store and starch that first. The other thing I should have done was the horsehair braid was kind of crumpled as you can see just this random piece here it doesn't it's not quite flat when they brought the dress to me it was kind of stuffed in a bag so this has gotten crumpled too and I don't know 
if you took a really um, barely warm iron to this, if you could kind of um, flatten it out a little bit. Um, I don't know. I wish I had kind of played with that and tried to see if I could get it a little bit flat before I tried to sew it down. So I'm trying to sew this down, which is not flat, to this fabric, which is no body or structure. Anyway, it was a little bit of a pain, but it's done. The next thing we have to do is we have to attach that to our satin. Here's the problem, and this is what I've been contemplating ever since I started this project. This gets folded under, and this gets folded under, and they get stitched together from this side. The problem is, they stitched this together, and then stitched it to the bodice and put the zipper in. I don't want to mess with the bodice. I don't want to take the bodice off the skirt. So what I am going to do is I'm going to open up one of the seams. If I open up one of these seams, I can get in that way. But first, I can do, I think, around quite a bit without that. Well, now I'm, now I'm rethinking this, how I'm going to do this. I need to flip it inside out, and I can't flip it inside out because it's stitched to the dress. I just do part way. Can I still flip it? I'm going to um, pin this and come up with a plan. I had a plan and then I came up with another idea. So let me get back to okay, it. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. Take the dress, turn it right side out, find the top, go to your side seam. Oh, goodness. So this is the side seam. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Then I'm going to find the corresponding side seam in my lining. So back in, follow this side seam in, 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 until I find the lining. Whoop, there it is. There's my lining. I want to make sure I have the right side seam attached to the right part of my skirt. Okay, here we are. I've got my top and my bottom. Now, we're going to flip this and line those two up with right sides together. Sorry, keep moving, we can't see. So I have my satin and my lining together. We're going to pin that. And then you're just going to go around and start pinning. Now you're not going to be able to go all the way around because we can't flip it completely right side out, but we're going to go for quite a ways. Okay, I've sewn my hem to my lining all the way around, except for about two feet. Um, basically, you need it big enough because you're going to have to flip the entire dress through this hole. If I still had my crinoline in it, it would probably need to be even bigger. So we're going to reach in there, and we're going to pull out the dress. <coughs> so you're flipping the dress out through that hole that you left open. There you go. We have our hem sewn except for our hole. Now what are we going to do about our hole? What you're going to do is you're going to make an opening in your lining on the side seam. So I have a side seam really close to my hole. I've already cut an opening in that. I'm going to go through in there and pull out that little chunk that I still need to sew. I'm going to sew that shut now, and then I'll be able to just drop it right back through, and my hem will be done, and then I'll have to sew the um, hole in my lining shut. To do that, I can either just fold it and stitch it kind of on the outside. I mean, you'd be able to see the stitching, but it's the lining. It doesn't really matter. So just stitch along that edge. Or you could just hand stitch it shut. So that's how we're going to get it that encased hem. So go in through your side lining to get at that last little bit. Pull it through the hole, stitch it shut, and then patch your hole. Well, now we should be all done sewing. The last thing is to press it. So you're going to want to make sure that that edge is right. 
you know, like that. And you're going to go along and press it all the way around. Be careful you don't melt that plastic under there. I haven't tried to press it yet, so hopefully that plastic is pretty tough to heat. It should be. It's for sewing. Anyway, that's the last step for your outer hem. Then next we just need to trim our inner lining, which is somewhere in here. Oh, I bun <laughs> to keep it out of the way, I wadded it all up and stuck a rubber band around it. So we still have to trim this, but that's a lot easier. So pressing next. Make sure your iron is clean. You don't have any, you know, sticky, icky, burnt stuff on it, and that you have a nice clean ironing board. The main skirt is done. Now we need to trim our underlining. And the point of this was to keep the crinoline from scratching your legs. So the crinoline part was between these two. This is too long now. I just um, hung the whole thing up and checked where the seams were. And along the side seams, it's about five inches too long. Along the back, it's only two. But it doesn't really matter with the lining, so we're going to just trim the same amount off all the way around. So it's about five inches too long here. We want it a couple inches shorter, so I think I'm just going to cut seven off all the way around, straight off. So, And then I'll um, roll the hem and stitch it. So anyway, five plus two, seven inches. So it'll be at least two inches shorter than the hem. Seven inches has been cut all the way off. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to my iron. I'm just going to roll it over a little bit press it. I'll go all the way around pressing it that little bit and then I'll roll that over and press it again. I'm not even going to measure, I'm just going to eye it. And then after I've pressed it, I'm going to go to my machine and I'll just stitch along there and that'll um, hem the lining. Okay, I'm sitting on the floor by the hem so you can see how it looks. <coughs> Excuse me. And we are done. It has been stitched and pressed. What's really nice about this method though, having the lining stitched underneath, is you have no seams on here. So you have this really nice flat view. And look underneath here and we have our lining. If you still had the crinoline under it, you would also need to trim that and you would want to trim it maybe just a little bit shorter than your lining. My crinoline is, has been taken out and it's going to be added though. Um, one very, very, very final step is would be to just steam the whole thing, because it's pretty wrinkled. Like I said, it was kind of wadded up in a bag when they gave it to me. So I would want to steam the whole thing really good, get all the wrinkles out, and then put it in a garment bag, not in a black plastic <laughs> garbage bag, which it came in. Get something so that it's not wrinkled anymore. Um, what I'm going to do with the crinolines so they can take it in or out, okay, I had envisioned like just putting it on like a slip between these two layers. And then I got looking at it and I was like, well, that was a dumb idea because the zipper's in the way. You can't pull it up to your waist because it unzips below the waist. So what I did is I got my crinoline and I've gone along the top edge and added um, some bias tape to make it stronger. And then I'm just going to add some like little hooks and eyes or snaps, something. And then I'm going to put go up underneath here and where the lining is up by the waistband, I'm going to put the same snaps or hooks or something. And that way um, she can suspend this up in there if she wants. After I get it suspended, then I'll check the hem on this and chop it off. And to cut this, you just, I mean, just take a pair of scissors and cut it or your rotary cutter, whatever you want. You don't have to hem it or anything. So there you go. Um, we are done with this video. Later I'm going to be actually working on the shoulders on it. Um, they're too long, but that'll be a separate video. Oh, and I have to make a bow tie of the matching fabric for her date. But anyway, we're done with this video. You have a good day. Bye.